Well, hello and welcome. And I'm back here today with our Taxpert series. This is Linda from My Landlord Helper. And I want to introduce Sabrina Lowry. And before you say hello, Sabrina, I want to tell them everything about you. So get, let me just tell them first off, I hold on one second. I just want to switch over to you to tell them about you. I want to show them your um, wonderful book while I'm telling them because I like read it. I devoured it in like three, three to five hours. Sabrina is a serial entrepreneur. She's known as the real estate doctor and the technology evangelist. So you all know why I love her. She's the owner and qualifying broker of Legacy Real Estate. Sabrina Lowry Enterprises, She's a biz, uh, which is a business and technology consulting firm. She had over 30 years in information technology. She teaches that. She incorporates all things Google. She really is an incredible expert. She's Google certified, but she's such an expert for small business. So for those of you listening, this is someone you could tap into. Uh, tap into. She runs a Geek Take Academy which offers live and virtual classes. Uh, this book that I keep holding and shaking around is The Blueprint for Digital Dominance. Again, just wonderful. You can get that through Amazon. She teaches several topics, which is business, real estate, fair housing, code of ethics. I don't know what else to say, Sabrina, that you. Uh, what I know about Sabrina is she believes everyone deserves an opportunity to be an entrepreneur with multiple strings of income, and she lives it. So welcome, Sabrina. Thank you so much, Linda. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be your guest today. Well, Sabrina, this little series was started probably, I don't know, I'll say about three months ago. We call it the Textbird Series. And when I met you, and we'll give everybody that background, I met her in a leadership circle called the Inner Circle, and it's specifically for women. And we connected immediately just based on this knowledge. And I thought, oh, what better guest for this show? Because you really, you know, sometimes I've had, let's say, specific platforms on, like a, a, a Bill, the, um, I'm trying to think, a, a host of others, uh, Hemelane, yes. which is also a women's based company out of California. She does property management. So it's, we're specifically, our audience, of course, is property managers or do-it-yourself investors. So your resources, just begin to tell them what, uh, I'll say, what you can do for them or what you know about the industry. It's not like a sales. It's like, this is someone with a lot of value and a lot of education for our industry. That is correct. I pride myself in education. I am an educator first. Even in my IT background, I was an IT trainer, a development and deployment specialist after we would create the software tools for our clients, which was a sales order management system for the world-renowned children's clothing manufacturer, Carter's Children's Wear. I worked seven years with that organization as a senior computer programmer developer. I used to code in a program called Power Builder and Fox Pro and SQL and Oracle. And so I'm a geek first. I loved computers from the day computers came into my life in 1984. So from the day I received my first joystick or computer to play on the computer, my first gaming machine, Atari, y'all remember that? Yes, I yes. Was always the geek. I was the girl among the guys. And that just seems to be the trend all the way across my careers. I, and, and that's a, uh, Sabrina, that's a connection point for us. Cause I remember um, actually 1984 when I got the uh, first one without a hard drive, my father-in-law had purchased this for, for us. And he said, you know, you do this with it. And I was like, what? Right. And then it came to my work and the rest was history. So I just love that. I really, I mean, that was obviously a connection point. And I, I read that, of course, in the book, you know, about your background and read, you know, deeper. But one of the things I think that people need to realize is with that deep knowledge of, I'll call it the coding, 
yeah. you also have an appreciation for the user experience. So yeah. you were at that end to realize how much the user experience is the buzzword I'll say today. Like, you know, we didn't understand that 20, 30 years ago. Obviously, it improved with each, you know, more uh, uh, new version, right? In new that is correct. But that is correct. I think it gives you and I, and certainly you, a distinct advantage of understanding, like, why it is so exciting to be in this, uh, you know, I'll call it software as a service environment because boom, so, you know, a, a production team wants to uh, change something about a software, boom, it just, it, it gets produced. You know what I mean? It's like, it's so exactly. exciting that it's not like, oh, well, you got to wait for, you know, three versions later before they can change that, you know? Right. So, like, it's so true. But people just don't realize, like, software as, as a service, let's say, changed our world, lock, rocked our life. The fact that you can get in at a low cost and get exactly what you need. And, and if there's a better tool, it makes everybody so much more competitive. That is correct. And even in technology, there's the keyword called collaboration. Yeah. So it took a team of developers and it took a team of software testers and it took a team of the debuggers. So everything in my life has been built on processes, systems, and collaboration. Well, let's go to that. So let uh, uh, one of the things I find fascinating, and again, once they dig into Sabrina Lowry, they'll see there's just so much to offer. So Let's talk about some of those uh, Google tools. So if we take, let's say, our, our lowest, I, and not that's, not that's the wrong word, the smallest investors that are watching us today, that they're not in the yardy or the property where they're just yeah. getting started. Tell right. them about some of the tools that you see are so efficient that they could be implementing. Like, you know, some free Google tools that are so tied into knowing, understanding what they could be doing with that. Absolutely. And so there's an entire chapter in my book, All Things Google. And in this chapter, I literally go through most of Google's platform applications, which are free. But the side of it that is a fee-based service with Google is called G Suite. And so I discovered G Suite four years ago as an entrepreneur, as a small business owner who was testing the Yardie building and property where and on and on would go to their meetups here in Atlanta and just to learn about their tools. And so coming from a technical side, I was just like, this stuff is way too expensive. It's just way too expensive for someone that's coming out of the gate. Now, for my former brokerage that I did start my real estate career with, absolutely, it's fine when you've got 80,000 agents under your umbrella. Right. But when you're starting out with a team of maybe 12, like I did, I had 12 agents on my team within the first six months of opening my firm. And so if you think about that, that's a very quick ramp up. Sure. That's not just from a cost ramp up, but from an efficiency ramp up. And so you have to get licenses. So in software, that's how they make money. They create the product, but they make the money in licensing the product out to multiple users. And so if you understand that as a business owner, it can save your budget by just knowing how licensing and getting these different software apps and tools for your business. And I chose Google. I jumped right in. If you think about it, 90% of the population probably has a Gmail account, right? Whether right. they use it for business or personal, there are a lot of Gmail users. Well, Google found it not um, a, a bad investment, but a smart one to now incorporate some tools for new business owners because that's a niche. That's a huge market. Entrepreneurship. Everybody kind of wants to have the side job or the side business. And for me, I've been an entrepreneur since I was in middle school. 
I used to bake cookies and sell them to my friends, right? So just think about if I had my smartphone or cash app or something that I could just, you know, take a debit card these days because nobody even carries cash anymore. So when you think about Google, all things Google, I started there. G Suite has a platform, a basic plan and a business plan. And I'm talking $5 per month per user on a basic plan that would allow your organization as a whole to have a Gmail suite for email, a Google Drive for cloud-based storage, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, which allowed me to replace my entire Microsoft Office Suite cost because those tools are what? Google's free tools. Right, exactly. So as the business owner, it made perfect sense to me as an educator, as the broker of my firm, in order to have what I consider my intranet, meaning my internal right. online base access for documents and sharing information, our portal is on G Suite and we use Google Drive. Google Drive is our cloud-based storage that allows us to share contracts, leases, move-in inspections, photos, videos to our investors. And then when I'm teaching or speaking, I use Google Slides in order to do my presentations. I taught a three-hour continuing education class just yesterday on contracts. And my entire class was launched on Google Slides. Yep, absolutely. You, Sabrina, you, I'll call it live the talk. I mean, I, I also am in Google Suite, but like I, I'll call it recognized kind of as a visionary, the, the promising features there were like uh, immediate. But I had a developer, someone like yourself, that set me up with the G Suite immediately. He's like, you need to be in this G Suite. And I was like, whatever you think, you know? And yeah. he had an, and he most definitely had an entrepreneurial mindset. He's the one that developed our software. Awesome. And that's why when we met and I was like, oh, all this stuff like was gelling for me, like it all makes sense. He always kept me, and to this day, keeps me on tools that save me money and allow me to be as big as we could, you know, our exactly. reach as large as we could. And I definitely see the value. Like, you know, even your team members, they'd rather have it on their paycheck than in the fancy software. You know, back in the day when I taught a corporate training class, like nobody can believe this today that's young, but the, the licensing for this data analysis tool, and it, cooked, it hooked up now to the Oracle server. So, you know, you have to understand, right? Right? It was a nationwide company. I'm sure, like Carter's, ten thousand dollars per seat per license. That's right. what you can understand. Right. So they come into the training like, oh, maybe I'd use this. You know, the average employee, maybe I won't. And I'm like, somebody's invested ten thousand dollars in you using this. You need to understand it exactly. And I might use that. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly they'd be like i'm not sure why i'm here i'm like somebody thinks you need to be here right <laughs> so right. it's like people just don't realize what the cost was when it was cd-rom based and installation based and you know i worked for uh helped out at my daughter's school and they bought this uh software as a service for collecting tuition and she brought me in the room and said, you know, could you help me with this? Because they thought there should be a CD-ROM and there was, you know, it was just at the changeover point. Right. And I was like, I pretty much jumped into the ceiling. I was like, what do you have here? Like, this is amazing, you know? And I was like, I want to work for this company, you know? So it exactly. was very cool. Like, people don't realize when you talk about this G Suite, you're a small business, you're out there. She's giving you like a huge nugget there, like you don't understand, it's not just having a Gmail. Right. It's the power of a professional Gmail that launches your business. It's a starting pad, it you know gets you going. Um, you know, you mentioned saving all the documents in there, 
So, you know, one of the things that, uh, that I will say, all the young ones are taking advantage of in college, but they don't necessarily, some of the entrepreneurs we're dealing with don't necessarily have that connection that those documents are shared. So if Sabrina opens it and I open it, we're able to collaborate together. That's a huge feature. Right. If you're right. old enough to remember Word, and I say version one, and she says version two, and by the time it's version five, it's all messed up. Right. The, the Google Docs keeps you all on the same page, collaborating. I love that. Collaboration. I said that in the beginning. Yes, you did. That's what, <laughs> That's what I'm, I'm ratifying that. So give me another nugget, another takeaway. So we're going to put them in a Google suite. They're a small yes. landlord. They're going to put their contracts. So think of mine now. My members are landlords. So they're getting started with buying some investment, buy and hold properties. Yep. What else do you think they could be doing with Google? I know. So outside. Anything, I don't want to hold you to Google. Any tip you could give them. Yeah, so outside of Google's platform, of course, um, I preach all things Google. I am a certified Google expert and trainer. That means I've invested time to be trained on Google's platform. So I'm not only a user, but I have been trained in order to use it and maximize all of its features because I will be the first to tell you that 90% of people have applications on their phone, their computer, their tablets, and they are not utilizing it to 100% of what its capabilities are. And that is simply for lack of training. So right. since I have that trainer hat, my role as a developer after I would deploy the software was to educate my user. Right. The end user, I became their help desk support on the other end, sitting behind the computer like we are, and I would literally have a headset on like, 911, what's your emergency? Can yeah. I help you? Yeah. yeah. And so that was my life. And so if you think about how video, let's just start there, has changed the trajectory of the way that we can do business for me, in real estate, video was the very first thing that I hopped on. I had to get over fear. I had to get over self-esteem issues about what I look like on camera. Is the lighting okay? Is this side good? Are my glasses okay? You know, and so video became my number one tool. And YouTube Zoom, the platform that we're on today, Facebook Live video, Instagram Live video, and not to mention literally hiring a production company for six months last year to roll out my Geek Tank series. So I have a web online video series that I broadcast every Tuesday at 11 on Facebook YouTube, and sometimes I'll jump on my Instagram feed because I have a tremendous following on all social media platforms, but video was not always accessible on the social media platforms. So, I have to stop you one second. Repeat that time on Geek Tank. Take that slow. That's really important. Anybody interested, say that again. Yes. Tuesdays. I couldn't even get it down. It was so fast. Yes, the Geek Tank TV, that is my vlog, my video blog, the Geek Tank TV. And I launched that last year. I now have over 50 videos in my series and some of them are housed on Facebook because I wasn't doing YouTube initially and okay. some of them are on YouTube. So you would literally be able to see the difference in a professionally produced quality video when I was going live in the studio every week and inviting guests on my show like you're having me here today. And we would either be live or in person together or streaming off site at a conference. And that platform has now allowed me to have over 50 subscribers on my YouTube, okay? And I've got over 2,000 followers on Facebook. So 
It's something that I'm passionate about. It is something that allows me 30 minutes a week to come before my audience, my students, my fans, and my customers because my investors are not all local here in Georgia. Some of them are international. They are never here in Georgia to be the boots on the ground to manage their real estate portfolios. And guess what? I have video that would allow me the platform to produce videos for them, to launch live streams where they can actually see properties that I'm listing and selling here in Atlanta. And guess what? Make an offer. We can do a remote video call. I can log on to my system and in the background, the client is literally watching me put their offer online. I, I, I just love that, Sabrina. I love that. I embraced the uh, camera too. And I think we have so many similar, I'll call it personality traits that I think that when I'm on the phone with you, I don't know about you. I have to ask you, I didn't pre-ask you this. But I struggle sometimes with a conference call, especially when it's one-on-one -on -one and I can't see your face and maybe it's something about business. And when I can see you, I can tell that your face is going, I don't know what she's talking about. This isn't a good idea. And sometimes I just want that feedback. I'm just looking to bounce an idea off of somebody. Being able to do that face-to-face, -face, I, I know even if you say, well, Linda, that sounds all right. Your face is going, no, it doesn't. Right. <laughs> not a good idea. Right. <laughs> like right. I can tell or your face is going, yeah, yeah, definitely go for that. That's a good. So you could see how the investors, like seeing their property, you know, we, we tell them that, like you, you've got cell phones, give, train your maintenance guys. Like they got to get that information back to you. We see that every day in the field. Like yes. that, that's your protection. Like you yes. get the, get the snapshot, get the video, get whatever it is. Yes. I am so with you on that. And I kind of can't wait. I'll say till the whole world embraces it. I mean, I know it's Jetson like, but I believe there'll be that day that, you know, you could always turn the camera off if you got a bad morning. Right. But if you're trying to collect with, um, connect with a client. Right. Face to face is where it's at. You know, it I, really is. It is. And I agree with you 125% regarding the maintenance guys. So in my property management company, I won't pay a vendor if I don't get before and after photos. So, <laughs> so how about that for accountability? And how about that for a tip? How about that for a takeaway for everybody listening? Listen to what she's saying. You're paying the bills. You set the rules. Yes. So, that, so then it's not a matter of training. It's a matter of they're not getting paid if you don't have the before and after. We had a landlord, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't want to cough. We had <clears throat> a landlord that um, all we make all their, all, every tenant, no matter where they are, no matter which landlord they have, we require pictures up front of what the issue is. And, you know, we've laughed about this because a leak could be a cup of water or a garbage can, right? And yep. it's always the drama when they call it in. But when you make it in a picture, uh, we have a better way of facilitating it getting done when we know Assessment, what. Assessment, my love. Yeah. 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 Do and I need a handyman today or yeah. do I need Serve Pro to read? Exactly. <laughs> Two foot flood, I'm saying. Exactly. But what I said to this lady is I'm getting all the pictures now from the tenant. But if you're maintenance guy, I go, you've got like a lawsuit waiting to happen here because all these people have proof that they sent in the stuff, but I have no documentable proof that it's finished. Like, do I believe them? Yes. But is the judge going to believe them if this goes to court? No. Right. Not without right. some tangible proof. So I love that. You show me before, yes. you show me after. That's uh, right. Especially, look, my landscapers. My landscapers are the first that I put in their contract. You will not get paid unless I get before and after photos, especially the ones that are on the annual contracts. I want to know that every 10 days you're going out. Not that your automatic billing is set up to bill our company because you've got an annual contract. No, I want to know that I'm not getting HOA fines because they are going to tell us when the grass is four inches over. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. That's another good tip, especially with people with reoccurring. That's a great tip. For, so the, those of you that are on some kind of reoccur reoccurring contract, ask for images. So, right. oh my gosh, you've given them like at least five tips already, Sabrina. Those are wonderful. Yes. Oh, tell us again, what else do you, what else would you recommend for your, um, I do apologize if that, if you can hear that. What else do you recommend for your property managers? What's another, like, it's probably just something you do every day. <laughs> so on page 18 of my book, okay, I have a list of 11 apps. If you think about technology, I would invite you to consider these 11 apps. And the great news is that Dropbox just announced a collaboration with Google Drive. So for all of us that were on Dropbox and paying all that extra storage for years as a Dropbox business account like I have, right? Okay, because the videos and the photos after many years in the business, you need several terabytes of storage space in the cloud just Absolutely. for archiving, right? Yep. So let's do the math. 200 and something dollars a year for the business plan for an additional terabyte of storage on Dropbox. Another $19.99 a month for G Suite additional uh, terabyte of cloud storage and then you've paid DocuSign, and then you're paying another app, and then you're, so when you're looking at your income and expense report, how much of that is spent on technology? Yep. When I do my business consultations for small business owners, they leave my office or that meeting, and they're just like, OMG, you <laughs> have just fix my life and put real dollars back in my pocket that I can reinvest in other ways in my business. And I am so passionate about that because I get it. Hello, in real estate, there's a new tool and an app and a call coming through seven times a day. Don't you know? Right. And right. so you can get so caught up in that. And then before you know it, you're spending a thousand dollars a month. Right. And you're just like, oh, we don't have money for this over here. But if you really took time to look at your P&L, look at that profit and loss year over year and see where the wasteful spending is. So right. just looking at my list, this is nothing new. But right. everybody doesn't know that. They don't know how to incorporate things like Dropbox and Evernote. Evernote, before I got really, really deep into my G Suite platform, Evernote was my tool. Evernote was on my phone. Evernote, Evernote excuse me, was on my tablet, the computer. Evernote was, all of my um, agents knew Evernote was my tool of choice because I would use it for scanning business cards after a networking event so that I can just upload it into my Google Contacts as a CRM. So if you don't want to pay $59 a month to top producer for a CRM, you can use your Google contacts as a CRM. If you go <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And you know why I, I would, I would again uh, recommend Sabrina, uh, my, by all means, her book, by all means, her geek geek tank every Tuesday at uh, TV vlog, and all those that are already out there historically, whether it be Facebook or YouTube, is listen to what she's saying. I would tell you, Sabrina, if I talk to you a little bit about our clients, most often, and, and this is the reason they come to us, most often they're focused on the next auction. You know how hard deals are to find. So yeah. let's just put it this way. We watched them go for deals. were so plentiful. They didn't have time to collect the rent, right? Yeah. They didn't know what software is in their office. They didn't know. They just bought from the, you know, they probably bought the Yardy and yeah. they had three properties because they were so busy focused on, you know, the auctions and the acquisition. Right. So now they have the challenge of they can't get enough deals because it's so hard to find good deals. So again, how many hours a week are spent on the acquisition 
So, but in the meantime, there's this slow, I'll call it leak on the back end that you're describing because they're paying all these services and they're never sitting down to go, do I really need all this? Like, what am I doing here? Let's get this streamlined. That's where Sabrina comes in. That's exactly what we try to do for them is say, what, what are you doing? You know, like, you, yeah, I, I mean, and, and we, we had a similar story with somebody with housing. I think it's a really good example. Um, a landlord signs up and they, they, they focus on the market where they're getting housing assistance. And they say, well, mm. there's nothing to worry about, Linda. The rent is 1000 and housing is paying 983 and oh, don't worry about the 17. And I said, well, you have to, you know, that's part of the plan. That's what housing expects you to do. It's the agreement they sign. And I had a testimonial from somebody that said, boy, was that eye opening. Cause you know, next month you could get the letter that they've been reevaluating and their payment is now 500. And that person don't even take your calls because you haven't bothered calling them this entire time because it was only 17. And he said, boy, did I realize quickly how much was seeping out the back end of uncollected rent until it hit me in the face and I couldn't pay the mortgage because I had just like not watching that whole end because I thought everything was cool. Everything was under control. So your example is just along those same lines. Like here you are, you're out there, you're selling, you're doing this. And you're not even paying attention to those credit card reoccurring charges. I love the landscaping one. You, you, yes, I trust you, but trust in what do they say? Verify. That's right. Just As a business owner, I do not want to be riding by all of my properties just to verify right. that the job was done. You know, on the major renovations, absolutely for my investors, I am spot on. I'm on the job site multiple times a week, sometimes multiple times a day, depending on where we are in those rehabs, because I've done everything from a simple turnkey between my tenants, and all we had to do was change locks to I've had to turn key a house within eight hours meaning somebody moved out at eight in the morning handed me keys and by five that evening the new tenant was moving in to major six months rehabs from gutting it adding additional rooms and roofs and landscaping and so my experience is across the board I've done every facet of real estate. I've done land sales. I've done assemblages for commercial development that now one of my first clients has an asphalt and cement plant in DeKalb County. I've got my name on that dirt, you know? (laughs) Exactly, exactly. Oh my God, I love that. And so I look at things like that. I've done new construction. I'm about to take on my first subdivision of 55 homes in Collins County as exclusive broker to just erect homes and add just ownership in the community of Powder Springs, Georgia. So it's a big deal. And anybody that does not take real estate and technology seriously it is absolutely not going to be a win-win for you. My motto every day when I wake up is, how many contracts am I going to write? How many customers can I serve? And I say that every morning when I rise because that's what I do. I write contracts, I sell houses, I manage property, and I teach. Those are my lanes and I stay in them. I don't want to be this to this person and that to that person. And people are like, oh, you're so busy. Yes, I'm very busy in my space. Right. And I've you- defined my niche. I've been very, very strategic for a number of years that when people are confused about what it is I do, I'm like, you're just not paying attention. (laughs) Exactly. Well, I have to put in one more plug because that was also in your book. And people don't realize for someone to be as organized as she is, let's just say, obviously the Google, that's very helpful. But uh, another thing we share in common was your um, project management, not to be confused with property management. That's how she can help you rehab a house in eight hours 
or in six months because she understands what a Gantt chart is and how to put it together and that if I don't show up, then the painter doesn't work. And if That's I, right. you know, it's all that, you know, milestones, making sure uh, that is another category you need to go to Sabrina. She can help you. That's another spot in your business where you get one and let's use the term blueprint for how those steps should be done and you've got it so she's giving you the nugget to reuse over and over and over again if you've never had to do that and sometimes people run into the investment world but that's not their background sabrina they've never looked at a project plan they never even saw those type of charts that help them visualize their success exactly so i i just had to say that i was like yeah you know like it's one of those things you overlook your expertise i know you know it but i'm saying in, in, and that's why you can get that done and that's why you can help others set up their business to get that done. Absolutely, so um, that was a perfect segue. So I was gonna go right into the book because one of the chapters, chapter three, page 10, is all about smart goals and business planning. I've literally taken time to give you a just little snapshot. Can you see that? I did. I can see smart it. goals. <laughs> yes. And I was just talking to my students yesterday in our contracts class about smart goals and business planning because there were four students that had only been licensed one to three weeks. And that just excites me because I remember being in that seat. 16 years ago with egg on my face coming from IT knowing I'm the smartest person in development but do I know anything about the process of selling a home the tools of writing a contract I had no clue and so I just think that having a plan having it written for accountability for purposes of budgeting and timelines and deadlines if it's not written it is not going to work you can be the most super organized in your own mind but when it comes to having to manage 16 steps in a project and 16 steps could just be ordering the roof material getting the roofer there getting the dumpster out there cleaning up the mess and making sure there's no nails in the driveway after the roof has been put on right. and then getting all of those images and photos and videos uploaded so that your investor knows that their new roof is the bomb diggity <laughs> <laughs> well I, I you know what we've got to end we're running out of time but i i can't tell you how valuable i think this is how beneficial it's been for everybody that's going to see this and hear it and i know where can they find you sabrina how do they get in touch with you if they're interested and they say i need some one-on-one -on -one with sabrina what what do they do absolutely i invite all referrals i believe in referrals i live on referrals that is the highest compliment that anyone can give me is to tell someone about my products and services and up until two years ago i didn't even have a product a tangible product my real estate listings were my, my products so you can find me online excuse me, at sabrinalowry.com. I am on all social media platforms, Google+, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. My handle is Sabrina Lowry on Twitter and Instagram, and it's Sabrina Lowry R-E Tech on YouTube and Facebook. Well, I thank you again. We're going to get this out there just as soon as we could. And anytime you want to come back, anytime you have like more information, you want to share something exciting. You gave us that exciting news about Google Drive and Dropbox and project management and landscaping contracts. And I don't, we, I can't even remember the very first tips you gave, but they've all been good. And I can't wait till everybody watches this and please share it with your audience as well. Absolutely. And I do have one major announcement to share okay. with you, Linda. On October 19th, I will be debuting my brand new book, my second publication called Social Etiquette. And Social Etiquette is all about 
how communication and socialization has changed because of technology. All right, we'll look forward to that for sure. And, and we'll put that in the show notes as well because October 19th is literally two weeks away. So yes. we're ready. We're ready for you. Thank you so much. I, we really appreciate this. And I'm going to stop the recording and, and we'll check goodbye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me.